So, okay, let's let's get back in this. Proper nouns always begin with a capital letter followed by small letters. Correct a given proper noun so that it fits this statement. Okay, so the first one is uh, almost as incorrect as it could possibly be. We want a capital first letter and lowercase all the others. Wow, we've got some work to do here. So, I mean, I suppose one way we could do this is sort of run through the word and for the first iteration, actually, you know what? Hey, let's, um, we'll do something like this, okay? So start with capital first letter. And then we'll do a loop that adds on all the lowercase letters. Yeah, something like that. Okay, cool, whoops. So we'll say, um, let word be assigned the value of, actually, you know what? I don't even need to put it up there. Starting with the capital first letter, that can be the beginning of it. So we'll say, let word be assigned the value of noun at zero dot two uppercase. There we go, cool. And then basically for the rest of it, so, um, oh yeah, okay. So, hmm, oh, check this out. Okay, okay, okay. Because I was just thinking like, oh, I wanted to use a, a for of loop in case you were wondering what all that like mm -mm, stuff was all about. Anyway, the point is I was like, I want to do one of these for of loops where I do something like for const character of noun and then we do a loop from there. But that's going to start with the first or like the zeroth character, which we've already dealt with. So instead of, of noun, let's do noun dot slice one. Wait, does that work on strings or is that just arrays? Hold on, let's uh, let's test this. Return noun dot slice one. Does that work? It does. Okay, so that will work. And by the way, fun fact. I mean, for anyone watching at home here, you know, if ever you've got a question like that, like, oh, does this work on strings? Test it out, right? You have the power. We're able to very easily, quickly check these kinds of things. So, uh, you know, believe in yourself, you have the power. Okay, let's continue. So basically the idea is that this is just gonna start with the uppercase first character of our noun. Then this loop is gonna go starting from this character, starting from the character at index one, it's gonna go through each of these. You know, I never thought of using a slice on a for of loop, unless I've done that before and I just forgot about it. But anyway, that's, that's clever. Okay, cool. So let's do this then. We'll say word. Can we do a plus equals, like a concatenate equals for a string? I guess we'll find out. Word plus equals character dot two lowercase. Okay, and then we'll just return word at the end. Yeah, let's try that. We'll see how that works. Does that work? We'll see how that works. It works. Yeah, okay, so we could do it like that. That would work. That's a way of doing it. But yeah, Rainbow makes a massive point here in the chat by saying, do we need this loop? Actually, more specifically, he said, no loop needed, which is absolutely correct. No loop needed because two lowercase is something that'll work on an entire string. We don't need uh, for it to work on just like one character at a time, concatenating it. We could just say return noun at zero dot to uppercase concatenated with noun dot slice beginning at one dot to lowercase. And that's it, you know, that works for us. Yeah, no loop needed. So now I'm wondering, hmm. Okay, I have an idea. Yeah, I have an idea. Ooh, okay. So check this out. Let's, uh, let's reset this. You know, it's got me thinking because I'm noticing each string has this built-in to uppercase and this other built-in to lowercase. These are basically prototype methods, right? Like we could do um, like string dot prototype dot um, to, uh, what is it? Noun case or something like that? Proper case? I'll say proper noun case. There we go. Uh, is gonna be a function. And basically it'll just say return this at zero dot to uppercase 
plus this dot slice one dot two lowercase. Yeah, okay, so could we just do something like this? Oh, let's not forget the thing here. Okay, great. Could we just do something like return noun dot to proper noun case? Would that work? Yeah, it works. <laughs> cool. So that's kind of neat, right? Uh, I think that's kind of cool, right? Instead of to uppercase or to lowercase, this makes it a lot more semantic. This is sort of one of the things I, I wrote about in the last article, the idea that if you make your code speak for itself, there's less of a need for things like comments. It's pretty clear when I say noun dot to proper noun case that I'm probably talking about doing this, right? As long as you're aware of what proper noun case means, then maybe this makes a little more sense to the reader. So, you know, this, this comes about in like our choices of uh, how we name our variables, how we name our functions, and also sort of like our choices of which methods we use. Uh, I think the example I used before is if you're trying to find an element in an array, is it more clear to say that, you know, array.index of element is greater than negative one or just to say array.includes element? You know, so we wanna sort of make our code as semantic as possible, uh, at least for the sake of clarity. I think that's probably a good idea. Okay, so great. Now, something to note, this is, I guess, just an opportunity for us to talk about this. So notice this thing over here, we're using sort of a traditional JavaScript function. I'm wondering, could we use uh, an arrow function? I mean, we love arrow functions, right? They're super cool. So we could just do something like this, you know, it's uh, this thing is gonna be something that takes uh, basically nothing to this stuff over here. So would that work? Could we run this now? No, we can't because when we're talking about arrow functions, so this is super important, Arrow functions, or at least my understanding, is that in an arrow function, you can't use this, okay? So they're, um, oh, what's that called? I guess they're not bound to an object. I think that's, uh, I might be saying that wrong, but like I think the idea is that this has to do with binding, right? Because you can bind something to a function and it replaces the this. Anyway, so the other, the only, other thing I'm aware of that you can't use arrow functions for is if you want to use arguments. And uh, now that we're talking about this, I actually don't totally know how to use arguments anyway. So let's check this out, JS arguments. Like the arguments keyword is, is what I mean. Yeah, arguments object, I think this is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but this is just sort of a general thing we can use in a function, arguments, right? So we say like arguments at zero, arguments at one, arguments at two. And uh, it's just whatever arguments we're getting in here. So this is like by default gonna be an array. Um, so what's, uh, what's neat about arguments is that we could do something like this where, um, Okay, let's let's just make some space up here and we'll do it in here. Uh, so we could say something like function uh, consoler, okay? And it takes in just x, all right? And it's gonna do console.log, actually, hold on a sec. It's gonna say um, arguments dot for each. We'll say arg, and what are we gonna do with each of these? Um, we're not gonna return anything. We're just gonna console.log arg. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, so I'll say, eh, I don't need to return. I'll just do consoler five. Let's try that, okay. Well, arguments dot for each is not a function. Uh, why is that? I thought it was like an array. Does this not have arguments? Let's try that. So we'll say console.log arguments. Yeah, oh, it's an object, okay, my mistake. Um, so we can't use for each on that. What could we do? Uh, yeah, okay, so it's an object that has basically like zero, one, and two, I guess, as the keys. Um, well, that's fine, This we don't need to loop over it. This is gonna give us what we're looking for. So basically, yeah, we could call it with five, we could call it with uh, nine, like whatever you want, uh, maybe like a, a string or something like that. Nice. Let's try that. So yeah, argument zero is nice. And that's also what X is, right? Like we could return X or something like that. The thing is we only have one argument here, but what if we wanted to call this with multiple arguments? Like what if we wanted to call it with um, the string nice, an array containing one and two, and maybe 
what else? The Boolean true and uh, a function that squares numbers. Yeah, let's uh, let's try that. So we get a console log and notice it, it's counting all of our arguments over here. So it's not really able to tell us too much about something like our function in here, but it is keeping it in there as a function. So uh, we've got all kinds of arguments here, even though we didn't list them up here. So that's another way to sort of do optional arguments in JavaScript. There are other ways to do it. Uh, we're not going to get super deep into that because it's not super relevant to this problem, but it's just because we were mentioning arguments and that's something that we also can't do as far as I understand with an arrow function. So let's try that and try to uh, see if I was informed correctly on that. This takes X to this. Let's try this. Wait a minute, what happened here? Oh, uh, wait. Oh, 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 okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. I was confused for a minute there because I was like, but wait, those aren't the arguments. Like I'm not giving it the, like this string as an argument. The thing is, uh, as far as I understand, uh, basically arguments since this isn't having that, you know, like since it doesn't have arguments, uh, it's taking the ones from the outer function. So, okay, cool. Uh, no overloading in JS. I'm actually not sure what that means. What's overloading? JS overloading. Function overloading in JavaScript. What is the best way to, to fake function overloading? Well, what is function overloading? What are we talking about? Is it like where we uh, use the same name of a function and like replace it sort of thing? Oh, oh, is, is overloading the idea of giving it more arguments than it wants? Uh, like, like, is that the thing that we're talking about right now? Uh, yeah, it sort of looks like it, eh? Close? Yeah, okay. So, basically, um... Yeah, we'll, we'll just know overloading, I guess, for... Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um... So how does overloading normally work? Like you, you just give it more arguments than it wants and then like it'll find a way to deal with that or like, um, because like there are a few ways we can give it optional arguments. Like uh, where did we do that? It was in the last task. It was last Thursday when we were doing um, the permutation heaps algorithm for generating permutations using a generator function. That's where we used it. So basically we had just inside here, we had like, you know, a second argument which had sort of a, a default value kind of thing. That's, that's kind of the idea so that if we're not given this, then it'll just set it to that. We could also just say something like, um, we could just put it in here, right? Like second and say, if not second, then second is assigned the value of default. You know, something like that. Um, oh, two functions, same name, different number of arguments. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So basically the idea is that, um, yeah. So my understanding is that for in JavaScript, it would just be the same function uh, that would respond to the number of arguments based on, well, however you want it to sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks for clarifying that. Uh, all right. So are we done with this one? We kind of went on a huge tangent there. I don't know if there's any other strategies we want to use here. This is probably fine. We'll submit it. I think everyone's happy. Oh, and that probably doesn't need the second argument in there. So maybe I'll submit it again just so no one looks at that and thinks, Ugh. okay, cool. Uh, all right, great. Yeah, I think we're done. Let's get out of here. Nice job. Nice job, everyone. We're doing an amazing job today.